Hey y'all and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Kelsey and this is my VSG or also known as gastric sleeve surgery journey. Welcome back, y'all. Welcome, biggity, 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 back, y'all. Hey, y'all, and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Kelsey, and this is my VSG, or also known as gastric sleeve surgery journey. I hope that through these videos, you're able to find the answers to questions that maybe you can't find online, that you really need to know. Um, you're struggling on whether or not to make the decision to have gastric sleeve surgery, or you just need to be more at ease with yourself. I hope that through my journey, I help you discover your answer and your direction. All right, so let's get on into the video. Today, we are gonna be discussing some of the most frequently asked questions that I've received since I've really started my journey and documenting it. Um, I am 16 days post-op and I am feeling good. Um, I don't necessarily know what my weight is right now. I'm not doing a weigh-in today. That is going to be on Wednesday for our weigh-in Wednesday. Um, I haven't come up with a name for the videos for Sunday. If you guys have any suggestions, leave those down in the comments below. Um, I do want to answer some of your questions in this video. I have 10 questions that I've picked out of all of the ones that I get. Um, I hope you guys don't get upset with me. Outside of YouTube, I am a mother, I am a wife, I do work a full-time job. So there are times when you guys send me questions and I'm not able to get right back to you. And I apologize, but you guys have to understand, a lot of my time, you know, I have to kind of delegate. And that's why I wanted to answer these questions for you guys in a video, because it just, it's easier. And then if you ever forget what I told you, you can come back to the video. And there may be questions that you didn't know that you are gonna have, That'll be here in the video. I mean, you know. Um, so I have, like I said, I have 10 questions that I'm going to ask. Ask. You guys have already asked them. That I'm going to answer for you guys. Um, I'm going to do my best. And I have my handy dandy notebook of questions. Two pager here. I went ahead and typed them up so that I could answer. So let me throw on my glasses here because I do have 33 year old eyes oh. um so I'm going to get into these so what I plan on doing here from maybe moving forward um I don't know if I want to dedicate individual videos just to questions anymore I would like to do a question highlight of the video um so if you guys ask a question at each video I can you know answer that question in a video so it'd be like the highlighted question of the week or you know whatever um so that at least i'm able to answer some of the questions that are being asked um, in a video form or if you guys would prefer me to do it in a you know just a, a question and answer video form that's fine just let me know what you you know what you would like um if you guys have it take a moment to like the video you guys liking the video really lets me know that you're liking the content that i'm putting out um i want to create content that you like and that you find useful. Um, because when I was preparing for my surgery, I couldn't find anything. And now that I began to make videos, I see more videos with more information. And maybe I just wasn't searching the right terms. I don't know. I just know I was out there like a deer in headlights because I was like, I can't find any information. And I know there's people that have questions or I know there's people that have had the surgery. Why are there no videos? Anyways, neither here nor there. I'm going to get into the questions um, and I'm going to answer them, you know, in no specific order and it be as real as possible because you guys know how I am. I'm gonna, if I'm going to be anything, it's going to be real. So the first question is, did, due to the surgery date uncertainty, did you complete your pre-op liquid diet? 
Those who have been watching my videos since the beginning of my journey know that my pre-op diet was a struggle. I struggled because I was uncertain with the date. So imagine being on that really strict pre-op diet for, you know, God knows how long. Um, so I struggled. So I do, you know, two days of the strict liquid diet and then I'd go and I'd eat a salad for two meals and then a protein drink. Um, and then I would just eat stuff that I wanted to eat. Not because I didn't have the willpower, it was because my mind, I didn't know when I was gonna have surgery. So I was just out here. Now, disclaimer, in all fairness, I am not a healthcare professional. Um, I really, really, really urge you guys to participate in your pre-op diet as it has been described. The pre-op diet is meant to set you up to do well during surgery. It's making the surgery better for your surgery and surgery, surgery, word of the day, define it. If anybody can define what a surgery is, put that in the comment box below. Um, it makes it easier for your surgeon to complete the surgery um, because as I said before, it shrinks your liver. Um, I had a complication in my surgery that my liver overhung my stomach a bit. And so instead of pulling my stomach out of the side like normal, they had to pull it through the top. And that's why that one incision has been bothering me so bad, has been bothering me. Um, but really y'all, follow your pre-op diet. Up until my surgery date, two days before my surgery, 72 hours, when I had a confirmed date, I went on the strict, you know, full liquid diet. That means the broth, the jello, the water, um, and what else? And the protein drinks. I did that for 72 hours. Um, and that was just because I was so scared that if I did anything wrong, that there was going to be complications. Follow your pre-op diet, y'all. It's really important. Number two, how do you deal with negativity and stigmas surrounding your medical weight loss? People say things to me or have said things like, can't you just eat healthy or work out? Or you can't just eat healthy and not even get the surgery. I've had a few people do that to me and it's really discouraging. First off, fuck them folks. Period. Ain't nobody got time for that. Um, but I have had people make comments to me like, don't you feel you're taking the easy way out? Or, you know, are you so lazy that you have to have a surgery? People who say mess like that are assholes. Um, who are raining on someone else's plan to change their life. Why is it so far-fetched to believe that the person actually tried those other options before considering a surgical weight loss. Why is it so far-fetched that someone would potentially choose a surgery over walking, eating healthy, going to the gym and losing weight? Why do people feel like, you know, someone risking their life over those options? Um, I'm going to just tell you guys and to those people who may be watching this video who are against surgical weight loss. There are two places on this earth that people can stay for free, for free, no charge. That's in their own lane and in their own business. So as long as they stay in those places, they don't have to pay anything. They don't have to, you know, give anyone their two cents. Mind your business. If you don't agree with it, you know, discuss that with someone else who doesn't, you know, agree with it. But don't come to the person who's making the decision to change their life because they want a healthier life. Because given, you know, we're not just out here getting surgeries because we want to be America's next top model, even though, you know, some of us could be. That's not the point. And I think that there's such a big misconception around surgical weight loss, and it's not fair. But at the end of the day, people are going to have their opinions, period. And the fact of the matter is what they think is not important. You're not doing the surgery for them. You're doing it for who? You're doing it for you. Say it again, for who? You. And that's all that matters. 
Number three, how do you make sure that you're getting the right amount of hydration? Ooh, child, I'll be thirsty. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you, I have attempted to find every alternative I can to not drink water. The Premier Protein, protein drinks, can't do them no more. Liquid IV, you already know, that's a no-go. Um, so the winner of that giveaway will be announced in our Wednesday video for the Wednesday weighing in. Is that gonna be the theme song for Wednesdays? Wednesday weigh in. I think I think so. Um, so, and I had that big black thing of water that I was trying to drink. Can't do it. Couldn't do it, sis. So what I ended up doing, I went to Publix, and Publix had these 1.5 liter Fiji waters on sale for buy one get one free. So I bought six of them. And, you know, we have a filter on our uh, refrigerator. So, you know, as I drink these bottles of water, I'm just going to go back and fill them up. I think the key to making sure that you're getting enough water, it's really about liking what you're drinking out of. And I know that's crazy. And I know that's like far-fetched. But I really feel like it's important to like what you're drinking out of. Don't, I mean, because I did not like that big black thing. It was clunky. It drew a lot of attention. When I was trying to drink out of it, it was like I was drinking like this. I couldn't look normal <laughs> drinking it, given this is a big bottle of water, but it looks dainty. It looks cute. It looks, you know, whatever, whatever you want to call it. Um, and another thing. Start drinking water as soon as you wake up. Hydration is key. I was kind of falling behind on my hydration because I was doing it wrong. And you have to, I think the important thing to remember is hydrate. Your body has to have that water. We have to have that water. Do everything you can to get as much water as you can in a day. You are supposed to have at least half of your body weight in ounces in water a day. It's important and you know sometimes we may not like cold cold water anymore um, very cold very icy water is going to be a shock to your pouch now um, I drink room temperature water even before my surgery I only drank like cold ice water I think during the meal or if I had been outside I don't care for cold cold water so you know, that's a little bit of how I've been able to manage my hydration. Still not, you know, 150% at it, but trying is key. Get the most in that you can, y'all, because it's so important. Number four, how much time did you take off work for the surgery? Okay, now, everybody is different, and I am not a medical professional. I took off one week. Um, because it wasn't required that I take off, you know, two or three weeks. They suggest two to three weeks of no lifting, pushing, pulling, um, strenuous, standing, standing for long periods of time. I sit all day. So I was able to go back to work after a week, but I also felt good after a week. I didn't have any pain. I didn't have any problems. So it really just depends on your situation and what you have going on. I'm not a medical professional. You know, do what is best for you. Number five, how much protein is in the Premier, clear Premier protein? 20 grams. Um, I was able to, I liked them in the beginning. I wanted to like them in the beginning. Um, but as I progressed through the time, through these past few days or weeks or whatever, I don't like them. They're thick. They don't quench thirst. So I have 19 clear Premier Proteins sitting in there if anybody wants them. No joke. Um, I just don't care for them. I tried them cold, over ice. And then, you know, I had posted in this bariatric group that I'm in. They're very snarky and, you know, I don't really like it there. But when I had gotten them, people were like, oh, they're too sweet for me. I don't care for them. And they are they're very sweet um so 
the fact of the matter is I don't care for them. You may like them. I'm not necessarily sure. Number six, how long did the did it take for insurance to improve your approve your surgery? I do have Alabama Blue Cross Blue Shield. Um, I submitted my request on 929 and I was approved on 102. Um, but I had all of the prerequisites. <laughs> Everything that, you know, my BMI, I had the pre-existing health condition. Um, everything that qualifies you for the surgery, I had. Um, and I had, you know, met all of my pre-surgery requirements as well. So follow up with your insurance to see what those are. Number seven, do you get hunger headaches? Not at all. And I, you know, I mentioned this to my coworker. I don't understand how I don't get a hunger headache. Um, when I was dieting before, you know, just doing keto or whatever and weaning myself off of the sugars and things like that, um, I would get hunger headaches or just a headache from lack of eating, period. I don't get those anymore. And I don't know if it's because my body needs less to function. I don't know, y'all. No, I don't get them. <laughs> um, how much did your surgery cost in all with insurance? Um, with insurance in all, and I'll go through everything, I had six dietitian visits at $40 a piece. So that's $240. And then I had two primary care physician visits at the beginning and the end, which was $35 each. So that's $70. And then I had to make the payment to my surgeon of $500. Um, and then I had to pay my hospital or my facility charges, which were $150. I had a visit with the surgeon not covered by my insurance because in between me getting approval for the surgery, I switched jobs. So you have to keep the consistency of your dietitian visits. You have to do them cons consecutively. You can't break them up because if you do, you have to start all over and I wasn't going to let that happen. So... I ended up paying $190 for that visit too. Um, for them to file my FMLA paperwork to my job, um, $25. I could have done it myself for free. I don't know how to do that. Um, so I just leave it to the professionals. Um, my vitamins, prescriptions, and supplements that I have purchased thus far, $175. A total estimate, <clears throat> $1,350 total for the surgery. Now, that also varies per person. Every insurance plan is different. You may not have to pay anything for yours. You may have to pay more. That's just a general gist of everything that I had to do. Um, yeah, but I, I prefer it because at my other, my other job, the deductible alone was $2,500. So imagine, you know, the amount that I would have to pay for deductible plus everything else. The surgery would have been close to $5,000. <clears> how, number nine, how to deal with, with negativity and stigma surrounding medical weight loss. Okay. Once again, fuck them folks. Um, people are going to think what they think, what they think, when they think it. Um, I think that the easiest way to be uncomfortable, the easiest way to deal with something that you're uncomfortable with is to criticize it and to talk negatively about it. People fear what they don't understand. People don't understand why you're doing medical weight loss. They don't understand why you can't just go out, bust a block and lose 20 pounds. But that's not for them to understand. The surgery is for who? For you. For who? For you. You know, and I have received some negative feedback but I get that because I'm putting my story out there. Y'all situations are a little different. You know, if your friends and family members and your significant other, you know, if they're not building you up and supporting your decision, you may need to can't like think about their position in your life and whether or not they really need to be there because people care that care about you want the best for you and the best for you is a better health overall. Why would you you know, prevent someone or talk about someone having a weight loss surgery when all they want to do is improve their quality of life. I don't get it. Never have, never will. But once again, the, um, the moral of the story is fuck them folks. Do what you got to do is for who, baby? You.
you. At the end of the day, the only person that matters is you. You. <laughs> okay. Um, number 10, do you feel that exercise after the surgery is, is necessary? I do have to go back um, to my last video. I came on a video because I talked to one of my really good friends um, in high school. He had the surgery. He looks great. And he says, you know, the day after my surgery, boom, I was busting it on the treadmill. And I'm like, oh, my God, I've got to get on the treadmill. I've got to get out there. I've got to do what i got to do. Hang on. I'm thirsty. Another thing to maintaining your hydration, if you're thirsty, drink. That means you're thirsty. That means your body needs water. So drink. Okay, and I was like, oh, I gotta get out there. I gotta tell my subscribers, yeah, y'all, we gotta get an exercise regimen. Er, hold up. So I had my uh, two week follow up with my surgeon and the nurse practitioner, and I ran the question by them and said, hey, do I need to go to the gym right now? And she was like, oh, honey, no. Uh oh. <laughs> She was like, your calorie intake at this point is not high enough. And this is how she, this is how she is on the, on the video call. Oh, honey, no. Your calorie intake is not high enough at this point to do any type of strenuous cardio activity. Okay? So at this point, I'm going to retract my statement of we need to get out there and get a you know, a formulated exercise plan to no ma'am, do your two miles a day, do as much walking as you can a day. I really feel like that's what's helped me is the walking. Um, but do not go to the gym and try and bust it down because y'all gonna be out here following out. And I don't want y'all to be like, well, Kelsey told me to get out here and get a, a formulated exercise plan. And now I'm just out here dead. Please y'all. Um, from my nurse practitioner and my surgeon, they said, no, not at this point. They don't want that type of gym activity until six to eight months. But like I said, I'm not a medical professional. Please follow up with your surgeon and, you know, their medical team to get their take on what you should be doing. Okay. Okay. And last but not least, I do have a bonus question in here. Um, this is number 11. Ding, 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 ding. It is a bonus. And, it, you know, it's going to be an honorable mention, but I feel like it was such an important question to be asked. Um, someone said to me, why have surgery if you can regain the weight so easily? And, you know, and I thought about that. That's a really good question. Why have, why take this chance to have this surgery if in 10 years from now, I can be the same size? And I think what's important to remember is this is a tool. This is not a solution. Um, it's a way to foolproof your efforts to get any weight off. And I'm, I have to read it because I, I wrote so much um, to get the weight off. In my life, I've tried every diet, whether it be keto, carb cutting, calorie counting, pills. I, I got to the point when I was trying to be out here on the Wanda diet from Holiday Heart. I was trying, I was about to do crack because, and I, I apologize, and I don't mean to offend anybody if they are, you know, recovering drug addicts. You know, that's not my, I'm just trying to be funny. I'm sorry, y'all. Um... But every diet that I ever lasted, you know, that I ever did lasted only about 21 days. And that was, you know, that was the most, you know, I'd lose weight, but then I would binge. Um, I would get burned out. I'd give up. The scale would stall. And I'm like, okay, I'm out here, you know, doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm walking every day. I'm calorie cutting, taking these pills. I'm sweating to the oldest. I'm doing it, but I'm not losing the weight. Why? And I would get discouraged. I'm sorry, but I don't have the faith of Job. I don't have the faith of Job to sit here and, 
and believe that this work is just going to be is going to work for me because so many times it had failed before. But what I didn't realize was my medical condition with the PCOS was affecting my ability to lose weight. And so I was doing all this work and I would lose a pound or I'd lose an ounce. And I'm like, are you kidding me, Lord? So I was so used to the weight that I would lose being temporary and just not sticking. And I made up my mind in 2018 that there was no other way that I was gonna get this weight off other than to have this surgery. I researched, I asked questions, I talked to people, I considered, I considered, I considered, you know, I weighed it, I weighed those options. And the answer always came back to, you've got to do this for you. Um, although my journey is short, I haven't, you know, I'm only 16 days out, you guys. I'm still a newbie at this. The stuff that I'm learning along the way that I'm sharing with you guys, this is all still new to me. Um, I've learned that in so many ways, this is a forced diet. And, you know, because me and my husband, you know, we had pulled up at McDonald's and, you know, he's grabbing him and our son a burger. And I'm like, ooh. But any other time, I would have been like, yeah, just go in and grab me a small fry and some chicken nuggets. Now, I can't eat those types of things because I'm in danger of rupturing my stomach, which can be deadly, or you know, making myself sick with dumping. I don't know if you guys are familiar with dumping syndrome, but it is a real thing. If you eat too much of the wrong thing, you become sick. So you are forced to eat what you're supposed to eat, how you're supposed to eat it. I mean, come on now, can it get any easier? And um, <clears throat> I just, I understand the complications that I can cause my body can be detrimental. This is for me. This is to change my life. This is to be happy. This is to lose the weight. And I'm doing it, y'all. I can see in my face, I haven't weighed. Um, I kind of had to step back from the scale again because I found myself weighing myself every day, sometimes multiple times a day because the scale wasn't reflecting what I wanted it to reflect. And that's unhealthy. That's unhealthy, Kelsey. I'm not talking to y'all, I'm talking to me or another Kelsey out there. It's unhealthy. And that's a fear of mine right now that now that these, you know, pounds have come off, that if there's any days where they don't, I'm gonna be discouraged or upset. But anyways, it's a story for another day and another time. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It is a little lengthy. It is on the, you know, the longer side. But I wanted to get this information to you guys because it's so important that you understand, you know, what you can understand before you choose to make the surgery or on your way to your final destination of the surgery. I love you guys in 10K, baby. Also... Welcome to my new subscribers. I have so many more. Um, you guys have all reached out to me. There are some that are close to me in Alabama. Hey, boo. Um, I'm getting to know each one of you. You know, we'll have little short, sweet conversations when I'm sneaking around at work, you know, trying to talk to you guys before I get fired. Thank you. Fired. I beg your pardon? Fired. Good day. Yeah, so I love you guys once again in 10K, baby, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!